Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. This is Daybreak and we thank you for your company. The hashtag on X is Citizen Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at IU Public Adil. Join you too is the Senator Moranga County, Geoffrey Ruko, the MP Mbere North, Faith Odhiambo is the President, the Law Society of Kenya, and Javas Bigambo on my immediate right is a Governance and Political Commentator. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for staying with us. Um, Madam President, coming to you, a lot has happened in the courts and uh, we are at a monumental juncture. How historic is this, given the test it has uh, um, subjected our institutions to, what's happening in the courts of law? Well, I, I say, first of all, the political class has put the judiciary into a very awkward position, having to resolve, po um, I would say, political stroke legal issues. And uh, that puts the judiciary at uh, the forefront, particularly this juncture, because the kind of the, the decisions that they will make will affect in future the kind of jurisprudence we'll have. Because we have now that it will probably be settled, uh, but uh, we'll see what the, once the petitioners, they indicated they're going to uh, appeal the decision um, that was taken by the three-judge bench yeah. with regards to empanelment <clears throat> as to whether the DCJ can empanel um, on behalf of the Chief Justice um, because there's a question of whether you interpret it in a strict sense mm -hmm. as per Article 165 for the Constitution or you apply the broader or holistic context that has been adopted from the Conchella case and also what was applied by the current three-judge bench, that it's not on just a strict sense that the CJ, the DCJ, it's an administrative duty that the DCJ as well can empanel. Further, the questions that will be looked at, what will be the public interest with regards to this matter? Because um, in essence, the country also stands a bit at a standstill because we are seeing a question of, um, by the court orders, is um, the deputy president properly um, still installed, or that is a vacant seat? And if it's a vacant seat, what does it mean for the country um, that we have a head of state, but there's no deputy? Because in event that anything happens yes. to the head of state, mm -hmm. who takes over? Um, even if you say it's the speaker, it's for a limited period. <coughs> Thereafter, elections must take place. And we live in this country. Um, the same matter is in dispute in our courts with regards to having setting the selection panel for IBC. So we do not have an IBC to even carry out an election. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so there is, it's a constitutional moment for our courts to come out strongly and guide the nation because the people are watching and listening and then trusting that um, the courts will be the ones to carry the day and bring back sanity into this country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Javas, I'll come to the politicians <coughs> because uh, there's one on the optimism side and the, and the skepticism side. Um, Javas, given the wave after wave of the national shocks, how do you think a determination by our courts will enhance our governance system? You see, factually, Ayuba, there is no more important political problem that has encumbered or bedeviled Kenya in the recent times except uh, the post-election violence. And as Madam President indicates, we are at a very historic moment. Historic moment politically, historic moment in terms of settling jurisprudence, historic moment also on how the judiciary is going to handle this matter altogether, but also how we are testing and stretching the particular provisions in our constitution. And when, with that appreciation, I think with this important moment, we need also to be particularly careful on how we, go, we, we engage or we lock horns on these particular issues, whether politically, on those uh, you know, sitting in the political seats, uh, in terms of the judiciary, because everybody is looking at the judiciary. Like I said earlier, that um, the, in the modern times, the manner in which the, the state is handling issues uh, presently mm -hmm. are issues that are becoming more complex. Whether you look at it in terms of constitutionalism and its demands, whether you look at it in terms of uh, judicial independence with the attendant issue of judicial restraint, whether you look at it in terms of um, the issues of the Bangalore principles, the competence, the diligence, the propriety of judges, 
all these things are very keen, and now inclusively with the issue of the participation of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Just recently, of course, during the impeachment uh, 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 you know, debacle, the people, close to 60% by the report of the National Assembly, uh, agreed with the charges that were facing Rigadi Gashagwa, 65%, which means participatory governance. And politically, of course, you also realize that Rigadi Gashagwa is entering the annals of history as, yes, a deputy president, now former, who's been impeached. By the time the courts are done with this issue, Rigadi Gashagwa will have been impeached by all the three arms of government. Remember that the executive impeached him by way of even the affidavit that was sworn by the secretary to the cabinet. They impeached his character and disagreed with the manner in which he was engaging in matters governance. The legislature, National Assembly and Senate impeached him. And now when and if the judiciary affirms that impeachment, the judiciary will have impeached him, historically having been impeached by three arms of government. And Rigadi Gasagua himself now sits at a very awkward position. Of course, he's helping us to make history, but he's also helping to build jurisprudence. Mm -hmm. Question arises on the part of some that why is he hanging on? Is he hanging on merely because perhaps he wants to make a point to his supporters, his support base, and his political cronies, uh, business cronies, and maybe political financiers, mm -hmm. that actually he went down fighting so that they don't come for his neck? All these critical issues are emerging on how we look at this. But most importantly, Ayub, yes. it is time for us to make sure that we not only defend the Constitution, we defend our institutions. How do we want to look at the Constitution and the content within its covers? That should we embrace and allow political expediency for the sake of particular political uh, considerations, or should we say that in our odyssey to good governance, we must actually be shrewd and thorough in making sure that we live up to the spirit of the constitution. This constitution of yeah. Kenya 2010 is not dead. Mm -hmm. It is living, it is alive. Yeah, and it is indeed uh, a living uh, document and uh, it's a transformation power, not of course in dispute or in doubt. And Senator Newtu, you were aggrieved and you voted no in all the charges uh, that uh, were brought before the Senate. But what then stands out for you, given the defense mounted by the deputy president, impeached deputy president who you support and, and, and feel that he was uh, unfairly treated by parliament? Uh, thank you, um, Ayub. I may not be able to, you know, to get to the legal uh, matters uh, so deeply as the lawyers may. But uh, 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 of course, we know that uh, the allegations, most of them, that were laid against the deputy president, all the all the charges, uh, I mean, all the grounds that uh, the move of the motion, uh, Honorable Motuse brought, and I know everybody was watching. He was not able to prove even a single, uh, I mean, even one uh, of the grounds. And this was political, and we know that meetings were held, long meetings were held, yeah. uh, and, 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 and everybody watched, uh, I mean, uh, the presentation of this evidence by the witnesses uh, in the Senate, because of course the Senate is the prior chamber, in the National Assembly they just passed the motion, and, and everybody could see that uh, none of the charges would, uh, or stood, uh, would stand, you know, uh, uh, critical examination. And so that is why I voted not to all of them. Yeah, and and, where, 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 and who, as you proceed, you said in meetings and your address is from, largely from the political lenses. Yes. So the meetings were held where and who attended the meeting? Um, of course, uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, details, uh, Ayub, yeah. uh, may not be uh, very clear. But of course, we know that meetings were held uh, to plan these. Of course, I can even say that uh, and a time is going to prove me right. Uh, that even, uh, you know, the, the bringing of ODM into government uh, through uh, the broad-based government, that arrangement, I can say uh, that the singular motive of that particular arrangement mm -hmm. was to throw out the deputy president. And you'll see the unfolding of events as we go by and by that, uh, of course, now the mission has been accomplished, at least politically, and now we 
only have uh, the, 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 the uh, the, the, the only hope that the, the, the deputy president has is uh, with the judiciary. Of course, politically, the matter has been concluded. And, uh, and, and so, uh, uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, this was a legal matter. Uh, and that is why, uh, watching the proceedings of the Senate, yeah. nothing would have stopped the Senate, you know, from finishing the job on Thursday. You know, of course, we have been told about uh, that it was a time-bound process, that, uh, uh, of course, we had 10 days. Uh, 10 days, even if you are going to follow that argument, 10 days were going to lapse on Saturday. And uh, when the motion came uh, before the Senate, uh, of course, to adjourn the sitting to Saturday, to give uh, Rigadi Kachagua an opportunity to come and present himself, I mean, present his evidence. And of course, third cross examination, which, which he was ready for. And everybody knows that uh, he was just taken ill. Not even, you know, the doctrine of extreme necessity uh, was considered. Okay. Nobody wanted to know. Mm -hmm. uh, the matter had to be concluded on, on, on the same day yeah. because it had been so decided. By who? by the powers that be. Is it the president? Uh, I do not want to uh, mention, uh, to say it's the president, because of, it's the president, because of course you're going to ask me for evidence. Uh, but, but of course, this is a matter that had been decided. But I can also so to, say- So to make easy your um, submissions then, I yeah. did ask the deputy president, um, the long night that he made um, his, his case and the long media briefing, whether this has the, had the nod of uh, the uh, president and he said, yes. Of course, yes. I, I don't think you can be able to impeach uh, uh, the deputy president uh, without the blessings of the president. And why? Because, uh, and Rocco is here, he will tell you that, uh, now, of course, uh, every member of a political party uh, respects and listens to the, uh, to the, to the, to, 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 to the party leaders. Okay. And that is why... Yes. That is why I, you, you will see that the voting takes a particular pattern. Okay. We'll, and we'll that, that about, is a fact. We'll, we'll talk about yeah. voting and, and, and the, the idea that uh, the broad-based government, as the president had uh, labelled it, was meant to, um, uh, to elbow out the deputy pre impeached deputy president, Rigade Gashagui. Sondra Baruku, you wanted to come in. Uh, first, we, ODM did not join the government uh, to impeach uh, the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm. That is not true. ODM joined the government to, stip to stabilize the government after June 25th, when uh, Kenya government was going uh, uh, down or was going south or was, or was going to docks. So that is the singular reason why ODM joined the uh, uh, government. What was and, the, uh, the, and, the destabilizing factor? And, and one of the... Uh, what was the reason what, behind the destabilizing Yeah, uh, many, many factors. One of them is miscommunication. Uh, from the side of the executive in terms of what the executive is trying to do. Communication of the government has been very poor. Even now, um, uh, government has not gotten right as far as communicating to the masses, to the public, to the people of Kenya, on exactly the programs they're implementing to the benefit of the people. Uh, that was a major uh, problem uh, which came out. But also, it was aggravated by uh, senior members of government, including the Beach Deputy President, uh, coming out with utterances uh, which are showing that uh, he, will, he can bring down the government, he can uh, take the, the thoughts of Mount Kenya region to another direction. Mm -hmm. All these kind of uh, utterances and uh, um, demeanor again and again, repeatedly, uh, so it cost. Uh, that it is important to stabilize the government so that uh, uh, because government has to hover services, uh, William Ruto uh, has to uh, fulfill the, uh, the promises or the manifesto uh, he meant to the people of the Republic. So um, I respect my brother, uh, Senator, but these are not uh, the reasons why, uh, I mean, ODM came to uh, to government. Okay, and it's only that uh, ODM and Kenya Kwanzaa agreed uh, 
in principle that this uh, deputy president is completely out of order and he should be impeached. Okay. So, so, so let, when, when let, the agreement of mind, yeah. uh, the, the conventions of mind comes, then that's why you see both sides, both the minority and majority in uh, Senate as well as National Assembly agreed in principle that uh, the character, the demeanor um, of the deputy president regarding uh, Gashagua is not fit to hold yeah. that high office. Okay. So, and there are 11 count. Yeah. Okay. Well, and we'll, according to us, we'll members the of the count. National okay. Assembly. We'll, we'll come to the count. So, so in, to just get it clear, I'll come to the communication aspect. So you needed the ODM party and Raila Odinga to politically punish Rigadi Gashago. No, no, no. We're not, we don't, we did, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there is conferences of mind that indeed uh, the beach deputy president um, has violated uh, a number of laws, have violated articles of the constitution, um, and uh, both members of the National Assembly in the minority and majority, as well as the senators in <coughs> majority and minority, uh, are in agreement. And that's why uh, it was impeached. Yeah. On, on miscommunication, you said uh, partly the, one of the reasons to blame, um, to, blame to, to lay the blame is uh, the, at the doorstep of the impeached J.P. Rigadi Gashagua. What, did, what then do you make? How do you then place and qualify the statement by the head of state on the 2nd of August when he said some of his cabinet members are incompetent, they don't know what's going on in their docket, they don't pick up his calls, he at, time, he at times has to call the PSS to understand what's going on in the ministry because the CSS are not picking calls. And he told them at State House that you are incompetent and it's unfortunate. So how then do you qualify that? How do you square that out given that it's he, the president, who is the appointing authority and gave those in incompetent folks the jobs? And, and, and that's why he came out and uh, fired a half of the cabinet. A half of the cabinet was sent home um, uh, because of some of these uh, um, incompetence or some of lack of, you are not keen to, uh, to details on what you are supposed to do as a cabinet secretary. I should expect more will be uh, coming, uh, will be going home as far as uh, uh, permanent secretaries are concerned. Mm -hmm. Uh, because still we have a gap in, in terms of um, being very committed within your state department, within your ministry, and having um, the, the, the grip of day-to-day -day happening of your state department, of your ministry. Uh, it is important, especially when you're talking about the Minister of Education, uh, you know how we have struggled with the Minister of Education. It has been a problem as far as implementation of the new curriculum, CBC, mm -hmm. uh, JSS, junior secondary schools, uh, the funding model of the universities. You know, it, it has been a big uh, major uh, issues as far as Ministry of Education is concerned. So whoever is responsible within that ministry, whether it's the principal secretaries and ministers yeah. and managers, they need to do what is right and they need to be seen, you know, putting all their best uh, as far as the ministry is concerned. We have a major problem in the Ministry of Health. At the moment, implementation, shifting from uh, NHIF to SHIF, the, 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 the systems are not properly synchronized. Who should be able to do that? Who, 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 who need, why should someone go for dialysis and turn that you can't um, get dialysis uh, because you can't, cannot reflect in the, in the system? Right. So these are things which the ministers and the state department yeah. responsible mm -hmm. have to seriously, yeah. you know, be seen to be doing work. Okay. And when you are given a job to do by the end of state, please, it's not the end of the state to come and ensure uh, the, the synchronization of the systems are, are, are working. It is you, the manager in that department. And, and it is you, the PS. Yeah, okay. So, uh, and when the, the head of state uh, um, take actions, yes. then they should not, anybody uh, should not start right. uh, making noise. And, and there's also the uh, profound sense of duty on your end as a parliamentarian and also on the end of the head of state. Oh, yes. Competent people That's for, sure. for the job. But, That's for sure. Yeah, the, okay. the, the, the committee. I'll, I'll come to parliament's role because you have talked about a very important point, which is the social health authority. M Madam President, given the length of these cases which are before the courts of law, what do you think the effect could be on the political establishment and largely the politics of the country? 
Um, with regards to the shift case? Yes. Not the shift case as such, but all what's happening in regards to the impeachment process and what appears to be the technicalities raised in the courts of law as we had witnessed yesterday and, and the bearing this could have on, on, the, political, on the politics of our country. Well, um, just, just from the kind of arguments that we are seeing in court, I'd say it, it's an opportunity to create and settle law in certain areas. Um, we'll be hearing today about the recusal and uh, people are questioning, we, are they going to be looking at um, the jurisprudence that have been developed over time or they're going to, you know, look at something different. And also it's, it's going to prolong the processes because just looking at the kind of applications that keep coming up, I think we are going to be, we are going to see some interesting times. Um, the question is how brave shall the courts be and also avoid intimidation from both sides. Both um, We've seen the courts complaining of intimidation by the advocates of the petitioners, but also there were news reports about intimidation um, from the, the position of the state. So the courts also must uh, arm itself and, and be able to defend its independence mm -hmm. with regards to making those kind of decisions that we're having. But for us, what, what's going to be quite important is looking at um, certain questions on public interest, um, what's the role of conservatory orders, the kind of public participation. I think for the very first time in our country, we have seen a standard of public participation that we shall hold the government and parliament to account. Because for the very first time, uh, members of parliament have gone to different counties to have public participation, and that's the standard um, that we will hope to see in event of any proposed changes to the constitution. Um, they now cannot run around and say there's no money to hold public participation with regards to um, when they want to change the constitution on other sections, but when they want to impeach the deputy president, there's money to go all around the country. Um, we'll be expecting proper public participation and, uh, and any referendums in event of any changes and also the question that the courts will have to grapple what was the kind of public participation and did it meet the standard. So for me, it brings an opportunity for to settle certain jurisprudence yeah. and also hold the government to account with regards to any proposed changes and particularly the question of public participation will be quite crucial. Um, as we look at the proposed constitutional amendment bill, because it's also going to affect the kind of public participation that will be expected yeah. and yeah. the involvement of the people with <coughs> regards to the laws that are coming up. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Javas, uh, is our judiciary dealing with uh, a political class that uh, has started its own trouble? <laughs> <clears throat> you see, first of all, I think what we are dealing with is not necessarily the truth, but lots of alternatives. When you get to hear even lots of untutored comments, even from the political class, it leaves so much to be desired. And for instance, uh, my, the great senator here is indicating that there are a couple of meetings to railroad the impeachment of uh, former Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa without confirmation as to when, where, who coordinated, and who were in attendance of these meetings. And I think these alternatives to the truth are also themselves uh, what I may call vacuous generalities that may not be helpful uh, with respect to seeing how we are building up the nature, the character, and the fabric of governance in this country. Former Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, in all these issues, created his uh, circumstances. In fact, he is now becoming a teaching aid in what bad governance actually is and bad leadership. He's a teaching aid, a bad example to that extent. And I would want to say that um, politics has got its occupational hazards. And Rigadi Gashagwa, of course, is also another good example as to how and when occupational hazards do emerge. But regardless of all this, we are finding the pride of place of the judiciary. If the government of the day was not perhaps in respect or respecting the rule of law, mm -hmm. then issues to do with contempt of court would have been self-evident. Go ahead and swear whether you want to violate the law or not. But we know that we are, we are living in 
a period where constitutionalism matters, the rule of law matters, good governance matters. And that's the direction that we are going uh, forward to. Now, I ask myself sitting here in this chair, what should the judiciary do? To what extent should it go on these issues? Impeachment, we know, mm -hmm. is a sociopolitical issue that even the Constitution itself places squarely upon the shoulders of Parliament, the National Assembly and Senate as a trial chamber yes. to determine all these issues. Of course, the judiciary has got ancillary powers in terms of settling issues of impeachment with regard to any uh, justiciable issues that may be raised, concerns that are fundamental uh, within the Bill of Rights, and we have seen Rigadi Gashago moving to court uh, to seek appropriate reliefs. Mm -hmm. And as Madam President here indicates, we've seen even conservatory orders. And to that extent, we've also seen the rule of law alive. But also the other issue is, to what extent should we see the doctrine of judicial restraint being self-evident in the political question? Because already we are seeing a political question yeah. emerging. Mm -hmm. And this political question, in its settlement, we are also finding ourselves at that you know, junction of a potentially constitutional crisis or disturbing constitutional issue arising. For example, if at all yeah. unfortunate circumstances happen to make the office of the president uh, vacant. And as we look at all this, some of even the governments and uh, the propositions being made by counsel for the petitioners are also raising, yes, fundamental questions of law, but also certain concerns. When the question arose whether the DCJ can actually empanel a bench to determine this issue. And we know, and when you read, when you look at the originalism and textual interpretation, of course, here I want to incline a bit to uh, Justin, uh, you know, Antonin Scalia, former justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. The issue of the provision within the Constitution about the administrative roles of the Deputy Chief Justice and the fact that the Ch Deputy Chief Justice is accountable to the Chief Justice and appreciating that the supremacy of this Constitution is sacrosanct, questioning this while it's within the rights of uh, the counsel to the petitioners also leaves me wondering whether they are questioning about also the supremacy of this constitution because it provides for that. All right. The other thing is that, Ayub, yes. that in all this, to what extent should we see or stay aside a watch in observance of this, in this abeyance state uh, of having an impeached deputy president, yeah. having a deputy president designator, and yet the seat still remains vacant? Okay. The office of the deputy president, yeah. which the constitution does not contemplate yeah. to stay vacant for long, except within the provisions that when a vacancy arises, then circumstances uh, uh, that arise with regard to having that seat uh, filled. Yeah. So I think we must not live in this state for far too long yeah. okay. because we're also offending the constitution itself. Yes, yes Senator. Uh, uh, thank you, Ayub, and I think I would want to respond to what Javas has said, uh, saying that uh, some of us are, I mean, we use generalities, and uh, like he quoted my, the my, meetings. my, my, my yeah, yeah, about the meetings. I think Javas may want to know, uh, and I think uh, but listening to the arguments by Javas and those by Faith, you realize that Javas is more political than legal. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know whether he has ever been elected. <laughs> I, I think, uh, and I, I mean, I'm a very, I respect people. I'm just saying this uh, because there are things that he does not know uh, and which I may want him to know. That, uh, you know, when I say meetings were there, yeah. Javas may want to look at it uh, from a legal uh, standpoint. Where? By, by who, who was the convener. You know, those are legal issues. They are political issues. If, for example, uh, and that's why I'm telling him, if he has, been, he has been to parliament, at least for maybe a session, he would know that what I'm saying are not generalities. Why? Because uh, politically, the president can actually even call you when uh, uh, you are with me. And you will show me, see, this is the president calling me. Mm -hmm. Let me answer him. 
I mean, of course I've seen it is a president calling that particular member of parliament. Now, if I tell you the president called Roku, you know, if you tell me to provide evidence, of course I may not have that evidence. Any vote that happens in parliament, and that's why I'm telling uh, Javas that there are things he may not know. Yeah. There's a lot of lobbying in the house. And of course, you will, when you are watching, you will see people go together, you know, they are consulting. Those are not things. What people say there, those are not things you can provide evidence for. So, so they are political matters. You're, so, you're talking about the small kamukunjis, the informal kamukunjis by law. Informal kamukunjis, there's a lot of lobbying. So it, I mean, people it, do meet. Yeah. They don't have to be formal meetings with minutes and, uh, you know, but of course, we talk to one another. The point Ro is, I'm asking, um, <laughs> is there an instance where you saw an MP who was being called by the president? Of course, many. But you're not privy to the conversation. Uh, um, many. Of course, we share. Somebody will tell you, this is what the president was telling me, and this is what I've told him. Those are not things you can prove, of course, but they are, th they are, th they are, th they are, they are, they are truths. So there's a lot of mobilization. There's a lot of lobbying with any particular decision that is made, uh, I mean, in political circles. You know, when, uh, uh, the other thing that disappoints me about Javas, being a lawyer, when he says in his earlier submission, why is Gachagua clinging? I thought as a lawyer, he should know that he is clinging to fight for his rights within the judiciary because he has his rights as a Kenyan. So when a lawyer says, why is somebody clinging, then it is disappointing because the lawyer should know. The lawyer, a lawyer of Bigambo's uh, mean, uh, standing should know that every Kenyan has a right to pursue their justice to the end. To the Supreme Court. So, court. so when you ask why, just a minute, when you ask why, uh, I mean, uh, somebody is clinging, then of course you show that you are. Uh, I think I like Faith's arguments. <laughs> Purely legal, and you can see they have legal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, seated here, you wouldn't tell, yeah. uh, I mean, where Faith stands as far as uh, in, in the matter of this particular impeachment. Yeah. But if anybody, even a lay person, will tell you that Javas supports the impeachment of Rigadi yeah. So I think it's important <laughs> yes. that uh, we be, you know, nonpartisan so that we can be able to. Uh, but of course, as politicians, yeah. of course, you know my stand. Yeah. You know Ruko's stand. So I think for us, yeah. we are, I mean, it's a, <laughs> Thank you. But, but um, by the way, the, the, I think I want to correct the Lost Society of Kenya yeah. joining the case the, presented by yeah, our, our predecessor, yeah. Hapa Happy. Yeah. So, so, what's your standing? The Senator the, says you have a standing. There, there are two issues which uh, Senator Nyuto is not saying the truth mm -hmm. or is not saying the other side of the coin. One is that also there were so many meetings to, to, to sit down with the Deputy President, the Ibiji Deputy President, mm -hmm. Liga de to tell him, uh, Mr. Deputy President, this direction you are taking is wrong because of one, two, three things. Many people, many politicians have sat down with him discussing These are issues. The venue. <laughs> discussing <laughs> issues. Discussing issues. Discussing issues. Discussing issues. Myself, I've sat down with the Ibiji Deputy President not once, not twice, telling him, uh, Mr. Deputy President, with all due respect, the direction you are taking is wrong person who is a principal assistant of the president, you are not supposed to conduct yourself like this. You are not supposed to have this kind of utterances. The constitution of the Republic of Kenya and the laws of the Republic of Kenya, National Coercion Act, uh, does not allow you to go around the country uttering these specific ones. And what was his response? Uh, yeah. Not once, not twice. And, and what was and, his response? And, and, and there are many who have sat down with him. Okay. Even the religious leaders have sat down with him. So I'm asking Honda Baruku, when you sat down with him, you explained to him that uh, he was in controversial or making statements that were at odds with his office. What was his Let response? Let me not go to that direction. Number two, the other thing... Positive or negative? Is it, is it, I'm that, coming back to that. I'm coming back to it. I've mentioned two things. Um, Number two, which uh, Nyoto is not telling you, is that, uh, as he said in the corridors of uh, Parliament, both the National Assembly and uh, the Senate, the Deputy President, the Ibiji Deputy President, does not have friends, including those who are supporting him, like Nyoto here. You have small meetings there, uh, and I'm not saying uh, it's him, but Nyoto will come and tell you. I, I, it's only that I can't be able to go out and uh, say you guys what you are saying, but we need to impeach him as quickly as possible. You know, 
you know, I have to behave in a manner that I'm his friend uh, for political purposes. So that of my grounds and hell. You know, if you are deemed a friend to anybody, tell that person the truth. The number of people who are working with the deputy president, the yeah. deputy president, and they are not his friends, are the majority. Those who wish him uh, he beached as quickly as possible. But because of the public gallery, they have to behave in a certain manner uh, to look that. Uh, but when they are in small kamagujis and small meetings, uh, they are speaking a different language. Those are two signs which my brother here is and not... Uh, again, I come back to my earlier question. So the thing is... You have made profound statements. So I will hold you to account based on what you have said, as yes. I did with Senator Nyutu. When you spoke with the deputy president about some of the statements that he made and you uh, warned him, advised him, what was his response? He what did not, he tell you? He could not listen. He just said, uh, uh, let, let us not serve here to him. You and other parliamentarians or you? In Many politicians have sat down with him. Many. Many senior politicians in this country have sat down with him including uh, senior ministers, including religious leaders, have sat down with him for the past two years, telling him, please, stop this. Stop saying Kenya is a, government, is, a, is a company. Stop doing that. Kenya is not a company. There's no shareholding in this, in this country. Did you ask the same, the president who also equated the country as the same when he spoke in Moranga County? President of the Republic of Kenya has been categorical. He has never, we have not seen him championing uh, divisive uh, politics in the Republic of Kenya. He have not, uh, we have not seen him uh, talking about one region uh, more prominently uh, than any other region of the, of, the, of the Republic of Kenya. Not now as the president, not even when he was the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. What then explains why he gave more than six cabinet positions to uh, people from the same region? Which, which region is that? Mount Kenya. It uh, depends on uh, how you want them to uh, structure. But uh, structure is government. But the thing is, the president of the Republic of Kenya has been, uh, he did and has lived to the true meaning of the symbol of the national unity uh, of the Republic of Kenya. Do you then mean Western Kenya, Nyanza region, coast northeastern, cannot produce six cabinet members in the same government? Are we not having uh, ministers from uh, coastal region? I'm talking we about have, numbers. We have, we have Joho in the, in, uh, in the government. Uh, we have I'm many, talking about the numbers, we, not we, one. We have several. About one, two, three, four, do five. You know, do you know even, uh, even uh, his own region, if we have to go that direction, how many ministers do we have at the moment in his government? The point I'm making is, is the cabinet make up a matter of convenience given the incompetence you talked about in August 2023. The president has structured his, his government in the most appropriate way. Uh, he deems uh, fit uh, because... Uh, um, my brother, I would not want to go that uh, route uh, you are taking us. But the thing is, the President of the Republic is a symbol of the national unity. He has structured his government in such a way. He has conducted himself for the past two years in a manner that all the, na all the nations, yeah. because Kenya is made of, of, of nations, as a, as a, when, for those who have studied international law and political science, uh, you know, we come from different uh, corners, different tribes, and we, 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 we should be uh, proud of our diversity. Our diversity as a people of the Republic of Kenya should not be a source of division. Kenya is one indivisible nation as per our uh, constitution, and the president has lived uh, to that. Okay. So, yes, Jabba, You see, uh, with respect to my good senator, my argument was and still holds that the epistemological basis of that argument was inverted. I was questioning the syllogism uh, the, in the argument that uh, he was making. I always say quite firmly that it is the object of the judicature to afford justice to whoever approaches the courts. That's the basis of the judicature in itself. And that's why we have got even the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights has got critical protections for every citizen. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if I may even quote uh, Justice uh, uh, William Douglas 
in uh, Griswold versus Connecticut, he says that the Bill of Rights has got critical protections, including penumbras, that have got guarantees which emanate from those protections within uh, the Bill of Rights. And that is why Rigadi Gashagwa has gone to court, mm -hmm. not just because uh, he trusts the courts, but he knows that he can get appropriate and fitting reliefs uh, before the courts. Those courts still have got guarantees and protections, including for other people, including government, and that's why we are seeing even government responding, etc. But as a matter of fact, as we look at this entire fabric of issues that are political legal, question is, for example, when you look at the aspect of fair hearing, fair administration of justice, yeah. when you look at all these things that are rights that are due to uh, former DP Rigadi Gashagwa, these rights are also due to every kind of citizen, every Kenyan, including myself. But as a matter of fact, appreciating the fabric of the politics of our country today, is this the kind of politics we want to continue playing? To what extent is it beneficial, not only just to the body politic and to the politicians, but even to the Kenyan democracy moving forward? The purpose of this kind of debates should be best to move not just the discourse forward, but even the country and all its mechanisms. Let me tie an issue, for example, on what the deputy president, former deputy president, Rigadi Gashagwa said when he was being discharged from a current hospital. He made certain statements for which he did not make particular disclosures. And I have, of course, I take judicial notice that he was invited to record a statement. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure whether- With the DCI. Uh, yeah, by the DCI, whether that statement has been made. But um, you look at the skydelic uh, particularities of those statements that have not been given particular evidence, eh? then you wonder whether somebody within such kind of ranks should actually make such kind of pronouncements without providing evidence, somebody who has been sitting within the National Security Council. So moving forward, I think, all of us desire to have a better nation, a strong nation, a progressive nation. But we should not have the excuse of, of politics and particular entitlements to drag us backward. Look at the example of, for example, Nelson Mandela. Spent 27 years at Robben Island, and even when he became president, he did not lay claim or particular kind of uh, claim to the presidency and entitlement because he served 27 years. But for example, some have argued and one may be uh, persuaded to agree with them that for former Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa for being a running mate to President William Ruto and supporting him yeah. in the 2027 uh, presidential election, 2022. 2022 presidential election, that Kenyans owe him the sky. But those are pol political arguments. And in this, all issues, there are political arguments, legal arguments, all of which we must seek to ensure that they are arguments that advance the amelioration of our democracy mm -hmm. in Kenyan polity. Um, 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 Senator, did the bicameral parliament where you sit and where Honda Boruku sits um, pull against the national mood in, in considering what somewhat may have uh, not uh, squarely weighed out with the other issues which are present for the public, including healthcare and education? Yeah, exactly, Ayub. Uh, you know, if my, my if, if, I mean, if my listening of Kenyans is, is right, the issue Kenyans are raising is, you know, the speed at which uh, this process was undertaken in Parliament, the precision, and Kenyans are asking why, and, and, and I'm glad that Honorable Roko has talked about the problems that we have with SHIF, the problems we have with uh, the new funding model. I mean, the question out there is, why don't we deal with the problems bedeviling Kenya, like Shiv, uh, you know, uh, uh, the issues of a uh, new funding model, with the same precision, the same speed with which we dealt with the, the impeachment of uh, our Deputy President Gachagwa. Uh, the, the other question that uh, Kenyans raised and, very, and are raising very fundamentally is, I mean, fine. Gachagwa may have his flaws, his weaknesses as a human being. Each one of us have their own, uh, I mean, uh, weaknesses. So the question has been the judges, you know, the parliamentarians. 
uh, that are judging him. I mean, I mean, how, like I asked in the Senate during my, I mean, as I was doing my submissions also, I mean, are they spotless? You know? Uh, because th 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 those are the questions, and that's why when you ask uh, Andra Boroko some questions here about, uh, and by the way, I do not uh, doubt the competence of His Excellency the President in picking his cabinet, uh, because that is his prerogative. That, but that is why when you ask him about several questions about the distribution of uh, cabinet slots, he's, uh, you know, you can, uh, it's, he, you can visibly see that he has problems, because what we are saying is none of us is perfect. So why do we take one particular person, isolate them, and, you know, slaughter in quote, slaughter them as if we do not have problems ourselves, as if we do not have weaknesses ourselves? And those are the questions. I mean, why this speed? Why this precision? Because it was military precision, uh, Ayub, and everybody knows that. I mean, the way this matter was carried out. I mean, yes. why don't we see this precision with other matters? Because if we did, then Kenya would be a much, much better place yeah. uh, to live in, and the problems that Kenyans have yeah. uh, would not be witnessed. Okay. But please allow me to, to, respond, up, yeah. Yeah, to respond to one, uh, to one allegation that Honorable Roko has made, that uh, they are friends of the Deputy President uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, actually wished that he was impeached. Of course, he knows that I'm not one of them, if they are there. But then, because Roku, you know, wants to uh, stand on a moral pedestal and say that only the friends of the deputy president, you know, are taking a particular, uh, decided to support him because of the, of the ground. I would have wanted him, and if there is time, please let him tell us, because he's the one who read the statement when Mount Kenya is, uh, you know, bolted out of Mount Kenya, to tell us, because now we can see that, uh, and I have a lot of respect for Professor Kidur Kindiki, but now we can see that, you know, you can connect the dots and see Honorable Ruko with some uh, parliamentarians from Mount Kenya East. So it was not about the rights of Mount Kenya East. Uh, forget it. Uh, he even forgot that they he actually said that there is no tea in Mount Kenya East. Okay. Uh, he forgot. But now you know that what was driving this was the promise that once Gachagua fell, it was going to be somebody from Mount Kenya right. East. And, and so let him not stand on Mar a Moropo pedestal. Allow me, please, to tell uh, Javas, I'm very disappointed. He did not ask Honorable Ruko about the many meetings that uh, he has uh, said happened. Uh, he has not asked about the venue, Senator, the I, conveners. I, I, I Ruko. Okay. I am okay. your Amazon king of the show. <laughs> thank, thank, you. So him, thank you, are you? Okay. I'll, I'll ask okay. him about that, that, that's fine. on, on that's, the clarities that, of where that, and how fine. those meetings happen. Yeah. So short yes or no answer here. Um, yes, you said that every human being has his own shortcomings. At any given point, have you um, advised the deputy president on some of the wrongdoings that he was commenting on, including um, qualifying Kenya as a shareholding company? Uh, well, uh, I've not had an opportunity to discuss uh, that with him uh, but I think he explained he gave an explanation to that and said what he meant I think anybody who listened to him when he made his presentation in the National Assembly because in the Senate he was not able to he felt he, he, made he, he explained and said uh, that he was to, only yeah, yeah uh, Senator knew to, to yes. get it clear because he contextualized it in the context of the uh, agreements that were signed amongst the parties in the Kenya Kwanza coalition I'm asking you as the senator of the people of Moranga County uh, yes as a fellow Kenyan, yes. was it tried to qualify Kenya as a shareholding company? Uh, I, I, I think um, uh, 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 it was just, uh, you know, he said it was just uh, an example uh, that, uh, you know, whoever, uh, you know, believes in the manifesto of a particular presidential candidate, of course, should be given a, a position because they are the ones that can be able then to uh, nurture and, uh, you know, carry out the manifesto once the the president uh, assets to power. Okay, let me put it this way. Is Kenya a company in your view? No, 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 it's not a company. Um, Honda Baruku coming to you. Let's now talk about um, this also other important matter, um, which is uh, on the term limit and the proposal that uh, was made by Senator Samson Chirarge to extend it from the current five years to seven years. Are you in support? I'm not in support of uh, um, addition of two more years for members of parliament and uh, senators as well as pre the president. I am supporter of the five years uh, term. Uh, for every five years, we go and seek a fresh mandate from the people. And for the president, five years, another term of five years, 
and it goes for retirement. So I don't support uh, Senator uh, Sergei's uh, proposal. And when it comes to uh, National Assembly, I'll be, I'll be one of those people who will not be supporting that uh, uh, registration. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Javas, in, in terms of um, our governance growth, we are <coughs> way beyond this, is it? And in any case, if this even sees the light of the day, it must get the note from uh, the people. And, and do you think it suffices, given the national mood at the moment, which is of angst and anguish that uh, the people have expressed towards the political establishment? You see, Ayub, there are certain priorities that must be things that uh, parliamentarians consider, the National Assembly and the senators. When you look at right now, the issues that are very basic, very vital to the progress, socioeconomic welfare of Kenyans, the issue of term limits, for example, is not an important issue. And I am happy, as Mwishimu uh, Aruko is indicating, that if it comes, then he'll flow it. I don't know about Senator. I hope he'll flow it, too. Because as a matter of fact, this is not an issue of urgency. And if, if we look at it in terms of um, the presidency being you know, uh, tinkered with, it is something that will require the approval of the people. Do we have the resources, for example, to have the IBC mm -hmm. handle the limitation of boundaries the moment it's fully constituted? Which is first time. Yeah, because by March this year we had reached the cap. Yeah. Handle a referendum and then handle an election in 2027. Those are colossal amounts. I have done a critical seminal paper for the Institute of Social Accountability on term limits. I've done continental studies on that. Other countries, when you look at uh, you know, <coughs> the, the western part of the country, the, the, the continent, some countries have reduced term limits from seven to five. It's only in the recent past that Rwanda increased its to seven term limits. Others have reduced to four. It turn, it's in fact, in terms of logic and reason, it's topsy-turvy for a senator to consider that as a matter of priority right now, when some people still are struggling to take their children through school, when some people are struggling to put food on the table, when some do not even have shelters over their heads, elected members of parliament is a priority. I think that thing should be shredded and thrown to the dustbin. I think I like the statement from uh, the UDA leadership, uh, Secretary General uh, Honorable Hassan Omar, when he said that it is in bad taste and that the party does not endorse that position by one of its members who is a senator, for Nandi Honorable Chirargay. Okay. Do you, Senator? Of, of course I can. Uh, and you too. Uh, of, of course <laughs> I cannot support such a retrogressive, uh, you know, idea yeah. and bill. Uh, because uh, uh, I, uh, like uh, my uh, co-panelists have said, I mean, we have more urgent issues. We have more pressing issues. Um, this uh, uh, is something that would call for a referendum. It's just like uh, my friend Javas has said. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we do not have the resources to carry out a referendum. And why would we extend terms uh, of, I mean, elected leaders? I mean, uh, in any case, we should uh, shorten them so that uh, our people may be able to carry out their, 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 their you know, to, uh, to evaluate their leaders um, every more often uh, so that they take, uh, I mean, they elect the leaders that may, they may want. So I do not support that, especially because of um, uh, it would not be uh, in the interest of Kenyans and it would be very expensive. Um, and and, 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 and uh, I would also fear the kind of precedent yeah. that it could make. Because if this one was going to pass, then uh, we can have somebody uh, maybe also uh, proposing and bringing a bill uh, to abolish uh, the presidential uh, term limits, gubernatorial term limits to two. So I think uh, it's in bad taste and I think uh, uh, it's suspect uh, looking at whoever is bringing it and uh, Senator Charalge is my friend and I know he's a very um, uh, progressive Kenyan mm. uh, but I doubt and I'll ask him this afternoon yeah. not had the opportunity to ask him yeah. is this really uh, your idea Senator yeah. 
viral yeah. or is it, it's coming from somewhere yeah. you know is it uh, being uh, you know are you testing waters uh, so okay. that uh, maybe in future we may bring also uh, you know a bill yeah. uh, to abolish uh, presidential term limits <laughs> i think i'll be able to ask may, senator may, Geraldi maybe that yeah, yes <laughs> yes this afternoon yeah let me sample the feedback here um, gentlemen and see what Kenyans are saying. Of course, we thank them for... Just so I wanted to yeah, say I'll one thing. The time, yeah. uh, the time. We sample and then I'll oh. give the time. So the hashtag on X is Citizen Daybreak. The SMS code is 22422 at Citizen TV Kenya and at IU. I've decoded here is what uh, um, you are saying on our X uh, platform that's coming up shortly on your screens. Uh, the first one coming uh, from... Uh, um, Chalo Ward uh, Rossi says former Deputy President Gashagwa's uh, name needs to be cleared by court for future political engagements and appointments, but he cannot serve again as Deputy President of, the, of President Ruto's government. MC Anders Kuruma says impeachment circus was just but diversionary tactic by the state to divert attention from important issues affecting common wananchi. While we are focused on Gashagwa's impeachment, term limit from important issues affecting common wananchi. While we are focused on Gashagwa's impeachment, term limits are being extended, JKA are done a deal ongoing, and the social health authority mess, etc. Janil Lazaro says Rigi G case is somehow tricky. Senator Newtu, do you still expect judiciary to quash the verdict of the legislature from both houses? The particular case was brought before, um, this particular case was brought before the lawmakers debated for hours and concluded case over. Sir Nixon Dugure says there seems to be a lot of struggle in interpreting the law like in Gashago's case. It's like our laws are open to multiple interpretations, which is dangerous because it allows for the concept to be misused, neglected or worse, weaponized. Bobo Tiano Weno says DP regarding Gashagua is exposing how both houses of the National Assembly and the Senate have been captured by the government and to an extent Kenyan judiciary too. Yes, one number of I wanted to say that it's very shocking to find some leaders from uh, within Mount Kenya region. They don't know that each and every constituency, there is an assumption that each and every constituency has coffee, tea and uh, milk. And there are several constituencies in Mount Kenya region which don't have some of these uh, cash crops. For instance, in my constituency in Bere North, we don't have coffee, we don't have tea, we don't have macadamia. Uh, we don't have uh, avocados in a large scale. We don't have dairy farming. All these things are not there. And I know also uh, the Raqqa constituency, there is nothing like that, and several other constituencies. So uh, it is good for us who are in Mount Kenya region to know yeah. it is not, we, 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 what's happening in Moranga yeah. uh, constituencies yes. is not happening in other constituencies within the same uh, region. Okay, thank you. Honorable um, Geoffrey Ruko, thanks for your time. Better North MP for um, gracing us with your presence here. Join you too, Senator Moranga County. Good morning. Javas Bugambo, thanks as well. Thank you. Earlier we had uh, the Law Society of Kenya President Faith of the Ambo, who has uh, dashed out for a very urgent meeting. Thanks for your time as well and sending us your feedback here on the broadcast. Tomorrow morning, Trevor will be here. Till then, good morning.